Well, football, where is the game now? Where is it going? Just how much further can the National Football League go to uh, protect its football players? Where is this game, logically speaking, going to be in 10 years? Game time, long ball time, daily copic time. We welcome our great friend, longtime Chicago Bear, brilliant football player out of Joliet Catholic in Notre Dame, Tom Thayer. Daily Copic brought your way by the marvelous people over at Carmichael's. 1052, make that 1052 West on Monroe Street. Stop by. The old gratin potatoes, the sides, the steaks. Hey, you lower the boom, you're going to have a meal fit for a king. Uh, Jim McMahon, Punky QB, your former teammate. How do you read McMahon when on one hand he sues the National Football League, claiming that the game left him with head injuries, difficulty with his memory, but on the other hand, McMahon is saying the volume of protection given quarterbacks today is ridiculous. How do you read Jim McMahon? That's, you know, I don't know. You know, it's, it's different because I think the farther you get away from the game, the health concerns become such an issue because more of insurance, lack of insurance opportunities and the way they're going to provide for their family. So as you get older, the health issues do become a concern. But, you know, when you start talking about the game as a, from an ex-player about the modern-day player, you have to look at it realistically. I hate the fact that they're protecting quarterbacks, too. I hate a lot of the rules changes. I think it's too soft. I think society has got too soft being so cautious about protecting the football players because that's why professional football is not for everybody. There is a risk, and you got to know it, whether you're an old player talking about it now or you're an old player talking about the players now. Suppose you had a son who right now was 15, 16 years old. Would you be happy? Would you, in fact, be relieved, Tom, if he didn't play football? Uh, not necessarily. I would encourage all boys to play football through a freshman year of high school because I think that's the last innocent year of football. Because after that, then you start putting cuts, guys have a better understanding of the game, and then technically and fundamentally they get more sound. And probably the reason I say this is because my brother coaches a freshman football team. And I go out there and I see these kids. And when you see them play football for the first time coming out of grade school, there's a transition that you start learning about the game. But you also learn camaraderie, teamwork, everything's not fun and the little subtleties about sports. So I would always encourage kids to play. I would never discourage them not to try. Uh, you had the misfortune to see me in uh, your locker room on uh, far too many occasions after ball games. I can never recall you not being uh, completely lucid about what had taken place on the football field, but were there ever times when you were dinged where you just didn't have a freaking clue what took place in the third quarter? Um, if the play was bad, I did. No, I, I, you know, I don't ever remember walking around in a complete state of confusion. Um, and that, that's the weird thing about it. But you go look at a guy like Walter Payton, the, the toughest man you've ever known, and I've ever known. He was never was on the injury report for a head issue or any type of head trauma. You know, Walter was a tough man, and he wore one of the most archaic helmets that, were, that was out there at the time in football. But so it affects everybody different ways. Sometimes the commitment to be a dedicated 16-year game, 16 game a year guy, takes a little bit of you know, takes a little bit extra to be a committed player. Well, for example, at this point in time, what could Roger Goodell do? What could the competition committee do, as we speak, that would provide more player safety without? <laughs> Turning the game into flag football, for heaven's sakes. Nothing. I, I'm with you. I think the rule committees that constantly change the, the game and they soften it up to try to take hits out away from the game, that it's, that it's not a factor, this, this whole kickoff rule. You've been around the Bears longer than anybody that I know. If you would take away that kickoff rule, you may not have Gale Sayers. He was the most brilliant return man. Still today, the modern-day players, they refer everything back to Gale Sayers. And there's other great players. You take the kickoff away as one of the main exciting threats, that's a huge play that guys develop careers on. So do you ever wonder where this game is going to be 10 years from now with people getting bigger, faster, better nutrition, uh, new gimmicks in the weight room, uh, new gimmicks to uh, increase uh, the entire dynamic of where individual athletes are. Do you worry that in 10 years your game will not be the game that you thrived on back in the 80s? Uh, no. I, I think eventually there's 
there's going to be an ultimate to the size that you can put these guys through the, the different paces, whether it's a linebacker, a tight end, a running back. I don't see running backs being 6'6", 300 pounds. You look at some of the talented, more talented guys in the game right now, the running backs are, are smaller, tight players. So I don't think it's ever going to ever, you know, ever evolve into such a big game that you can only, you know, it's hard finding players for. But it's, you know, it's always getting more talented because they're more conscious about what they do in the offseason and how they train. The Mike Martz offense, how much better is Jay Cutler's grasp? And what, what is Cutler's leadership capability when you compare it to McMahon, who was just not necessarily a leader for you guys. He was, uh, he was almost like a messiah. You know, in Jay's case, you can't be a leader until you know the system well enough to tell everybody exactly what to do in every circumstance that you can possibly face against any defense you're ultimately going to see. Now saying that, Jay Cutler right now, he knows this offense probably a half second to three seconds faster than everybody else in this team. Uh -huh. And as you see the plays develop, he has a great anticipation of exactly where the players are going to end up to put the ball in the right place. It's still going through the growing process. But when you go back to this training camp, you can see Jay take receivers off to the side and tell them exactly where he wants them to be at the conclusion of the route, how to get there more efficiently and faster, and what to expect when you're in a certain position to a defensive back. So um, Jay Cutler's got all the athleticism to do the task. Mentally, he can grasp everything in March is telling him. Now he finally knows the system well enough to put everybody more uh, efficiently in place. Let me give you a wrap up. Uh, all the years you and I have done this, I've never posed this question to you. Uh -oh. Who was the single toughest player you ever competed against on the NFL level? Well, there's, there's two guys. McMichael scared me every single day of practice because I've had some of the worst training camps in my entire life practicing against Ming every day. Mm -hmm. And I'm serious. It was just as scary as any game going out there. And I remember getting yelled at in front of everybody regularly by Ditka because Ming was killing me at times. But, you know, when you get the opportunity to see a guy like Reggie White come along, Hampton's great, Richard Dent is great, Mikey Hartenstein, all the guys that I practiced against at the Bears, but shoot. Uh, you know, Reggie White was in a, in a position, uh, you know, in a power position of his own. Hey, champ, I appreciate it as always. Thanks, Kavik. First, last, and always a Chicago Bear. Tremendous broadcaster on WBBM and on 105.9. Tom Thayer joining us right here on the Daily Copic. Daily Copic brought to you by the marvelous people over at Carmichael's, the place for steaks in Chicago. We'll catch you next time around. Hey, stop by Carmichael's right now and have a big filet mignon. Have a side of our rotten <laughs> potatoes. Then uh, top it off with a big slab of carrot cake. That's Copic style. You're going to love Carmichael's. Take good care. So long, everybody.